Hello, my name is Stephen Intermill, and I am the director of the Buckland Museum of Witchcraft and Magic in Cleveland, Ohio. One of our main goals here at the museum is to celebrate the history of American culture that our founder, Raymond Buckland, was such a huge, significant part of. We recently acquired some pieces that belong to a famed early American Wiccan, Dr. Leo Louis Martello, an individual I have a long history with because the very first book on contemporary witchcraft that I ever read was a book called Witchcraft, the Old Religion. That was, well, many, many years ago. Leo Martello, not just an early Wiccan, he was a spiritualist. He was an expert graphologist. He was an early gay rights advocate. And to me, one of the most interesting individuals in a subject that just bursts, bursts with fascinating individuals. Recently, a gentleman named Ken from Serpentine Books in uh, Salem, Massachusetts, reached out to us about an artifact dealing with Leo, and we jumped, jumped at the opportunity to share it with the world. It's his altar, and uh, we're going to get into that in a bit. It's now on display in our gallery, and we thought we should announce it today, October 30th, because 50 years ago, 50 years ago today, October 30th, 1970, was also a Friday, and we found this really cool flyer for an event Leo was part of that night. To celebrate, we thought we should speak with an individual that knew Leo back in the proverbial day, writer Peter Lavenda. Lavenda has written multiple books dealing with such subjects as Sinister Forces, Unholy Alliance, The Dark Lord, Secret Machines with uh, Tom DeLong, and he was an integral part of the early American pagan movement. So, uh, this, this is going to be really fun, and uh, here we go. And Leo was a force of nature. Leo was just, um, he was the person who really jump-started a lot of this because of his energy. He had energy, but he also had a lot of vision. He saw that you could not extricate or separate religion from culture and politics. Uh, he came of age, essentially, uh, politically after the Stonewall riots in Greenwich Village in 69. And he became a very um, uh, energetic defender of gay rights. And it wasn't just the, the political rights of gay people that he was uh, involved with. It was also the idea that gay people had been oppressed by culture, not just by politics. And he didn't understand how a gay person could be, for instance, uh, a Christian or a Jew or a Muslim, since those religions proscribed homosexuality, demonized it. Wicca, in Leo's, uh, from Leo's perspective, was a, a welcoming, uh, open area, a safe place for virtually anybody of any kind of, of persuasion, of any gender identification. This was long, obviously, before LGBTQ became uh, a movement. This was strictly, let's get rid of all of the, the norms that are associated with monotheism and with the Abrahamic religions. Let's go back to the religions that existed before all of this, when these practices, these identifications were not proscribed, were not illegal. Uh, you could not be put to death for being gay, uh, you know, until the monotheistic religions uh, in the West came into being. So there was this idea that if you were really serious about gay liberation, then you would have to be a pagan. And if you were really serious about paganism and Wicca, you had to be in favor of gay liberation, as well as feminism, as well as animal rights, and all of these things which he identified with paganism and Wicca. On a personal level, the guy was a maniac. I mean, he was very funny. He was very energetic. And he had an absolutely dead center um, approach to, to his belief system. I mean, there was no wavering. There was no doubt about Leo Martello. You knew where he stood, and he knew where he stood all the time. And he could poke at, um, uh, if you were being um, inconsistent in your beliefs, he knew it, and he would, he would step right in and say something about it. So he was, a, he was a person who was, like I say, very humorous on the one hand, but extremely energetic. And we had nicknames for him, you know, behind his back. We called him Leo Marshmallow instead of Martello. Um, never to his face, but uh, he was, in a sense, a very kind person, uh, unless you were full of crap, in which case he wasn't, and he would let you know it, and he was right there in your face all the time about it. So his involvement with Wicca from the very earliest days, you know, from 1970 at least, 
uh, until, you know, when I met him in 72, he was already very prominent. His book on psychic self-defense was on everybody's bookshelf. Everybody knew that book very well. Herman Slater promoted it constantly. It was uh, a godsend for him and for a lot of people. Uh, the idea that your mind was a battlefield, that your mind and your spirituality was a place of contest, was a contested area. This was something that was uh, very certain where Leo was concerned. And it was a revelation to a lot of people who never really thought about it that way. So I met Leo back in 72. I was involved with the Friends of the Craft thing at the Unitarian Church with uh, Judith McNally and all the others. Um, it was a, He was a flamboyant kind of guy. He would dress in outrageous costumes. and uh, But he, he was always one step ahead of what you thought about him. Uh, you may have had an immediate reaction to seeing Leo Martello, but he was already one or two steps ahead of you on that. And he could poke fun in that reaction that you had as well. He was a fascinating guy. And his uh, identification with paganism was very, very strong. He saw in paganism a kind of uh, salvation for people who were marginalized. It was a marginalized faith or a marginalized religion today, but it had not been. It was the ground from which we all came. All of religions have their their basis in paganism somewhere. And he defended that. And he also defended the idea that a lot of the so-called modern Wicca religions were a kind of fabrications. Uh, there were what um, sociologists or anthropologists would call bricolage. They were just combinations of things that were found and put together. And he defended that, saying, well, yeah, maybe. And he had discussions with Margot Adler, who was a dear friend at the time as well, uh, defending that point of view, saying, well, so what? I mean, Christianity began as a kind of bricolage also. It was supposedly a Jewish religion, which became infused with pagan elements uh, through St. Paul and through others uh, before and after. And, uh, you know, he defended all of that. He defended the fact that Judaism had been a bricolage in, uh, in, in its initial stages, that there was a worship of of a god and his uh, Asherah, his goddess. There was a, you know, a god and goddess combination in ancient Judaism. So he was not uh, an anti-intellectual by any means. He simply transcended a lot of that in his personality and in his writings. And he found that he could defend his point of view uh, on this with, with aplomb, with no matter who he was uh, discussing this with. So he was, a, he was a fascinating guy. We always had a lot of very funny interactions uh, but they were also, on, on one hand, very profound. You would go home later and think about it and say to yourself, well, that was that was interesting, what, what Leo had said today about this or what Leo had said so, today about that. Look what I found in a box here. Sure, the witch is any defamation leak, absolutely. Yeah. Do you have any memories about that? Well, that was part of the whole thing. I mean, we had... There were so many movements at that time. There were so many organizations. Uh, and the Witches Any Defamation League was one of them. I think Isaac Bondwitz was a member of that, if I'm not mistaken. And he was writing about, you know, magic on the other side, ceremonial magic and that sort of thing, and about Satanism. And he got involved with uh, with all of that on, on the West Coast and was writing about things like that. The, the Witches Any Defamation League covered everybody, basically. Everybody, it was an umbrella organization for people who were trying to get Wicca recognized, take the... Um, the opprobrium away from it, take away the bad uh, messaging that there was in Hollywood. Uh, witches were always depicted as evil creatures. And Leo understood that there was a reason for that that might have been valid to a certain extent, but that the problem was that it was anti-feminist. It depicted witches as evil women for the most part. So there was this anti-feminist aspect to the Hollywood depiction of Wicca. Uh, he didn't, he, he thought that was evil, that that was wrong. It was wrong on many levels, not just it was against Wicca and against witchcraft in general, uh, a misunderstanding of witchcraft and a misunderstanding of paganism, but it was also used as a way to attack feminism um, by, by equating it with witchcraft, by, by equating, um, and also ageism. Uh, witchcraft was, uh, you know, a bunch of older women you know, who were cackling in the back with a cauldron, very Macbeth, very the Scottish play. So you're, you're, you're mixing up all these herbs and you're cursing people. Leo was kind of okay with that, but he didn't like the way that it was used to, to um, paint everyone with the same brush, 
paint all of paganism and Wicca that way, that it was this evil thing only involved with curses. This was the same problem that uh, Hollywood had with voodoo, uh, also was you know portraying voodoo not as a religion, but as a mechanism for cursing people, sticking pins and dolls. So there was this common cause that was made between Wicca, between voodoo practitioners, between occultists in general, that we're going to improve the image of Wicca. We're going to get people to stop using the term witch to refer to any kind of person and practice they did not like. And that was really Leo's point of view. There was a political and a philosophical point behind it, which a lot of people failed to see. They just said, well, this is about, you know, getting Hollywood to stop talking about witches negatively. And even in my young years at that time, in, in 1972, I was 22 years old. And even I looking at it thought to myself, well, that's not going to work because Wicca is relatively new and the depiction of witches in Hollywood is relatively old. Um, how are you going to get it? How are you going to get that ship to change course in the middle of the ocean? And Leo's point of view was it's about more than Wicca. It's about more than witchcraft. It's about a political and cultural approach to people we don't like, to practices we don't like, that we don't understand. It's about, I mean, it comes down to including racism as well. Uh, voodoo is just as much about racism as it is about occultism um, and on and on. So Leo had a very defined concept. He had a very sophisticated understanding of all this. And it was sophisticated because he was on the receiving end of a lot of this, you know. So as, as a witch, as in a gay person, he was on the receiving end of a lot. The anti-homosexual um, milieu at the time was, was very strong. As I say, the Stonewall riots that happened in 69, but that didn't suddenly magically change things. It made things worse. It got sides entrenched in their positions. And Herman Slater was attacked, and Eddie Bozinski was attacked for being gay. Um, so there was this idea of making out of out of gay rights and uh, Wiccan and pagan rights, one thing. And the Witches Anti-Defamation League helped to provide that kind of umbrella organization for a lot of those ideas. And I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be thinking about some of the things that Peter talked about there for many days after this. Um, thank you very much, Peter Lavenda. I'll probably, uh, I'll probably post some more of that interview on just a standalone segment sometime soon. But uh, so thank you, Peter, for uh, talking to us about Leo Martello. And I think it's kind of time for us to show our recent acquisition, Leo Martello's Altar, which came from Serpentine Books as a donation. Serpentine Books is uh, based out of uh, Salem, Massachusetts. And uh, find find their e ebay page because it's it's uh ken over there deals with some really 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 cool stuff so all right well here we go leo martello's altar so proud to have this on display here at the buckland museum of witchcraft